Stevie Ray. How are you, Stevie? Hey, man. You see me? Yep. I see you just fine. Uh, thanks for doing this. I appreciate it. Good to check in with you. Uh, I know you're busy tonight, so thank you for the time. So like I said, we haven't um, seen you in action since July. Um, it was it was reported all over the place. That was the last fight on your deal. Of course, it didn't go your way. Where do things stand here? End of the year, mid-December. Where do things stand as far as your career is concerned? Um, to be honest, I'm not 100% sure um, what's, what's going on. Um, I mean, yeah, I fought out my contract. Um, I didn't quite realize what fighting out my contract know that I would be sitting on the sidelines for so long. Um, I thought, you know, just I was risking getting a little bit more money. Um, but yeah, I'm just it's been it's been frustrating. Um, but I, I've been in touch with Sean Shelby. Um, he's just basically said that you know he's really busy. He's got a lot of fighters to to match. Um, and he's even got some fighters that have won their last fight that are still waiting on a new contract. So I think uh, I think he's just got a really busy workload, especially with maybe Joe Silva recently uh, leaving. Um, but yeah, he's just he's not told me I'm getting resigned, and he's not told me I'm not either. So hmm. uh, yeah, it's a bit of a nightmare. But I'm hoping that I'm I'm going to get resigned for London. So. You were offered a, a contract prior to the Paul Felder fight, and it was your decision to say, you know what, I'm going to play this out and try to get a better deal following a victory. Um, that deal that you were offered prior to the Felder fight, that hasn't been brought back to the table following the fight. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Um, so me and my management um, had both kind of agreed that it was better fighting out the contract to try and earn the money that we asked for. Um so, yeah, we fought it out. I, I just, I thought that if I fight out my contract and I won, then I get the contract that I asked for. Hmm. And if I lose, then I get a worse contract. I get, you know, one that isn't so good. I didn't, yeah. I didn't think I'd be on the sidelines. Or, or I wouldn't have fought out my contract. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's... I have spoke to Shelby, though. He did say that he will re-sign me for the same offer. So he said the same contract will still be on the table if and when he re-signs me. So at least I know if I do get re-signed, I'm getting the same contract that was initially offered. But the question is, I'm a, I don't know if I'm 100% getting re-signed. Right. Um, so it's been five months since your last fight. Have you considered fighting elsewhere just to remain active to try to get back on track, or is that too tricky at this point? Yeah, I think it's just too tricky. I mean, I've been offered uh, like you know, a few other promotions I've been getting in contact, like ACB um, offered me a fight in November. Even even like Bama offered me a, uh, to fight on the Newcastle show. Um, so there has been offers there. It's just I don't want to jeopardize getting back to the UFC because if I go and re sign with another promotion then I've probably ruined my chances of ever fighting in the UFC again. You um, think so? Why Why so? I mean people bounce around. Why do you feel that that is? Uh, I don't know. Just the, another promotion probably wouldn't just give you a one fight deal. Um, you'd maybe have to sign up to a few fights and the only reason I would really look at seeing somewhere else is if the UFC have said you're not like that's that's your cut basically. Then I'd be looking to sign with. But that's the exciting part about it. I don't I don't know if I'm 100% getting signed or not. Um, Sean said that you know it makes sense if they're going to re-sign me that they'll re-sign me for the London card. And he's not he's not started. Um, He's not started matching from that card. I think Max put a couple of the, the kind of heavier guys on the card. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm just pretty much sitting on the sidelines hoping that I get an email soon. Um, I've been trying to call out everybody else, so I've, I've kind of took a step back from that now because I end up looking stupid calling people out and then and then they're being told 
see these out of front of Right. Um, yeah, so... Do you feel, Stevie, like you're being punished for not taking that initial offer? Maybe. I mean, the, the UFC didn't really want a lot of fighters fighting out the deal, so it's maybe... But I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Um, I've, I've, by, this, by the sounds of it, the way you know Shelby's been in touch and stuff, and it just sounds like he's got so much work to do like he said that some guys have fought out the contract and won the last fight they can't re-sign them yet because he's got other fighters in contract that need to get fights by certain, get certain time on him so it just sounds like you know he's got a lot of a lot of fighters to try and match for a certain time um, so yeah it's kind of my fault obviously I fought out the contract but um, it's been a tough, tough few months. Speaking of which, I know you you spoke to our own PT Carroll. You also spoke to MMA Junkie about this um, several months ago. Uh, I, I read some stories that you know you said that it was hard to leave the house. You were very depressed. Um, you you were feeling bad about what happened. You were regretting it. Uh, here we are in December. How are you dealing with it all? Do you, do you feel like you're you're starting to you know the clouds are starting to open up that you you see some kind of light at the end of this tunnel? Or are you still feeling blue? Eh, I'm I'm not feeling a hundred percent to be honest. I'm feeling a lot better than where I was. I was like in a really dark place. Um, um, yeah, like obviously it was probably a mixture of I got knocked out for the first time yeah. in my career. It was in my home, uh, so there was a lot of pressure on me. Um, and so it was maybe a mixture of that, and also not knowing what my future holds. Um. Obviously, as most people know, you only get paid when you fight. Um, I've got a fiance and three kids. Um, when you start living this life here in the UFC, no, things acting a little weird here. Stevie, can you hear me? No, maybe we need to reestablish the connection here. Let's uh, let's try to do that because it's not very good on the ears. We'll reestablish the connection there, but you heard it from. Uh, you heard it from uh, Stevie Ray. There, still not signed. Still, you know, it's interesting to hear him say that. You know, it's his fault, and we talked about this on the beat a couple of weeks ago. If I'm an NBA player and uh, I'm gonna you know, test the free agent market, you know, you, you, you decide the summer before, maybe two summers before you have at least 82 games, or if you're a baseball player, 162 games for your football player, 16 games, um, NHL, 82 games, you, you have a pretty long period to try to put your best foot forward. Um, in our sport, we talk about free agency. It really isn't free agency. It's not real free agency. Uh, there's really only one place that you can go. Yeah, you know, a few people can go over to one. There's a couple of people that can go over to Ryzen, but it's really just Bellator. Um, and so that's not really, you don't have a ton of options and you have one fight to essentially prove it and it could go wrong. And so I, I don't think it's fair to put that on yourself and say, it's my fault. You know, it's it's just, that's the way sports should be. Unfortunately, um, you only have one fight as opposed to 82 games to try to put your best foot forward and, and write the ship. I, do we have Stevie back? Let me see here. Stevie, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, we lost you there for a second. Are you covering the uh, Are you covering the microphone on your phone? Because it's a little muffled. The sound. Oh, maybe is that better? Uh, it's a little bit better. We'll, we'll we'll go with that. I just see your I just see your forehead now, Stevie. I want to see your full face. Put the camera back a little bit. There we go. There we go. There we see the full face. Um. Okay, so so you said that you're starting to feel a little better now. Is there any reason for that, or is it just that the 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 you know time is healing this wound and and you feel like you're turning the corner? Uh, just just really, I've moved on a little bit. You know, I've, I've accepted the fact that because um, I was I was waiting around, waiting, waiting. Uh, I've just recently opened up my own gym. Uh, just starting small, so I'm just. Kind of Renting a, a little studio room, um, 
I started to take classes in my local town. So that's been keeping me preoccupied and busy. Um, and then, but yeah, I'm still obviously waiting to hear if I'm, if I'm getting anything. Yeah. Here, so. do, you, do you have a deadline in mind? How long you're going to wait for? Like how long you can afford to wait? Really, like January, um, for the London card, that's my deadline. If I don't get re signed to the London card, then I'll, I'll literally have to think about what I'm going to do, whether I want to fight elsewhere or, or just jack it. <laughs> um, okay. Do you want to continue yeah, fighting so, if you're not in the UFC? I, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Um, like, the goal was always to get to the UFC. It took me, it took me like, seven years, um, a lot of time, a lot of sacrifice. And, and to get there, and, I, and if I didn't get re-signed after getting beat by Paul Felder, um, who is obviously on a tear-up the now, then it just, I don't know, that just shows how we're getting looked after, I suppose. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's it. That's the most annoying part about it. I don't feel like I, I deserve not to get re signed. Right. Um, I've beat, beat some good guys, Ross Pearson, Joe Logan. I, I just got caught off Paul Felder. You know, I got caught. Um, it was one of those things, part of the fight game. I've still got a lot more left in me. Um, there's, there's a few guys I'd love to get my hands on. So, What's the dream scenario so for London? Now. Eh, uh, I would put, I don't know. For the fans, it would probably be Mark Diakese. I'd love to, I'd love to take his head off. Um, Who's that? Who does, say it again, Mark. say his name again. Mark Diakese. Oh, Mark Diakese, okay. In December. We had a little bit of beef on Twitter, so. Um, yeah, maybe him. I could also see Marston Held, I think would be a nice fight. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I've I've got loads. Though. I'm that I'm that frustrated. I'm ready to fight anyone. And what's going on between you and your management? Is that all cleared up, or are you involved in some kind of issue with them as well, or maybe your your ex management? Yeah. Well, it, to be honest, we, I thought, well, I was on the phone to them the other day, and we've agreed to to move up, like move apart. Okay. I'm no longer with them, and we're still in the. We're still in the negotiation of of um, what's happening because I'm still I'm still due him a percentage of my last fight. So yeah, we're in kind of some negotiations of what's happening with that. But yeah, as as far as it goes now, I'm also a free agent when it comes to management as well. Okay, so a lot of transition heading into the new year. Yeah, a lot of frustration to take out on my next opponent. <laughs> yes. Well, I, 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 my opinion doesn't mean much, but uh, I certainly think that you are worthy of being in the UFC, and I'd love to see them uh, re-sign you. And um, you know, if they were willing to offer you that deal prior to the Paul Felder fight, I feel like you know a loss to Paul Felder, especially at this point, considering how well he's doing, is uh, is nothing to be ashamed of. Is nothing to scoff at. So London seems like a great place uh, to have you return. Um, for whatever it's worth, I wouldn't be so hard on yourself. I don't think that you made any kind of mistake or messed up. Uh, this is just business. Sometimes you roll the dice. Sometimes it doesn't work out. But uh, you know, I, I don't think that that should be held against you, so to speak. Um, so I hope everything works out for you, Stevie, whether it's in the UFC, which I know is where you want to be, or outside of the UFC. And, and, and hopefully 2018 is a, um, a more positive career as far as your career is concerned uh, than 2017 was. So hang in there, my man. Keep us posted on how things go. And, and thanks for some time here on this Monday evening. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for having me on the show. And like I said, if I do get on the London card, uh, beware of who I'm going to get because I've got a lot of frustration to take out on them. All right. Good luck to you, Stevie. All the best. There he is, Stevie Ray, um, looking to get back in the UFC. Uh, It didn't go well as far as his contract offer was concerned. Let's see um, what happens here. Uh, 
hate to say it, but wouldn't put it past them to hold that against you if you uh, turned down a contract and it didn't go your way. And uh, of course, they're in a state of transition as well. And there's some cost cutting and, and, and they're letting deals run out too. Uh, we heard from Chris Wade last week who said that his deal uh, ran out and uh, it doesn't appear as though he's getting a new deal. So it's a different era now. It's a different time in the UFC. So we'll see what happens with uh, Stevie Ray. 